Hey there guys, so this video, how to treat lower back pain or how to, you know, fix lower back pain, they're, you know, questions that I get pretty regularly because a lot of people have had the misfortune of injuring their back. Now, mechanism of injury is always going to play a significant role in determining, you know, your path to recovery. So very long story short, you know, if you've hurt your back really badly, go see someone, get an MRI done so you can at least find out, you know, what damage has occurred as well as, you know, the immediate steps that you need to take. For a lot of people, if they have just general, you know, lower back pain and the rest of it, they assume that the lower back is, you know, weak. Now, you could view it differently and most of the time I take the approach of maybe the lower back isn't weak, maybe everything else wasn't doing its job correctly and the lower back was forced to stabilize, you know, the hips or forced to you know, perform a role that it shouldn't have had to have done. And as a result, you've gotten injured because, you know, the lower back is doing too much. An example would be in deadlifts. Like if you're deadlifting really heavy and your hips, you know, come up really quick at the start, you know, you're going to be pulling and using a lot of back to um, complete the lift. Now, you know, in that scenario, your hips came up far too quick. You know, your hamstrings and glutes just did not do the work that they should have that they should have done. You know, you should have held position if your hamstrings and glutes were strong enough. And, you know, getting towards the top part of the lift, pushing your hips forward, you know, really cueing that extension of the hips, which is, you know, glutes and the rest of it. You don't want to be doing that with your lower back. So if you hurt your lower back in that regard, it's not because the lower back was weak. It's just the lower back was doing a role that it shouldn't have done because either technique was really off or the supporting muscle groups just weren't strong enough. So with that being said, you know, we we step it back. So a few really good, you know, exercises then it's like, okay, let's target the hamstrings. Really easy ones, just basic, you know, leg curls. Throw those in up and you'll be surprised. There's a lot of power lifters as well as strong men that just completely neglect you know, hamstring curls and just general hamstring work and they wonder why, you know, they end up with lower back problems. So obviously put some, you know, hamstring work into your program. It doesn't have to be over the top. You know, you might do four sets of, you know, 12 to 15 reps twice a week. You don't have to go really hard at it, but you just need to put some quality volume in your program somewhere for them. Another movement, you can go light with stiff-legged deadlifts and really feel the stretch of the hamstrings on the way down. It's going to mimic your deadlift in some regard that it's similar in a in motor pattern. Um, there's going to be a little bit more lower back involvement. But I've found in the past and when coaching people, if you go light on the stiff-legged deadlifts and really feel the hamstrings working, it's a really good exercise. The moment you, you know, really load up on it, yeah, you can do the movement, but I find the lower back takes over because it's used to doing that. It's used to having to do more than its fair share. So if you keep the weight really light, you will feel it in your hamstrings. So there's two, you know, really easy exercises. Now, when it comes to glutes, for me, I prefer doing single leg hip, you know, thrusts. So my upper back is on a bench and I'm just going down, uh, glute touches the ground and then straight up. I do one leg at a time because I've found, you know, if I used, if I had both feet on the ground, it'd be far too easy versus, you know, one leg, it forces the body to work unilaterally. So I can pick up if I have any imbalances in that regard. Depending on where you put your foot, you can feel it a fair bit in your hamstrings. But for me, I predominantly feel it in my glutes. And because, you know, I'm doing one side at a time, I get a little bit of reciprocal inhibition going with my, you know, lower back. One side has to relax while the other side has to, you know, contract to try and hold, you know, my pelvis pretty much square. It's not the best terminology, but, you know, sort of gets the point across. Um, that's all I do in regards for that. Then when it comes to, you know, actual core work, so you can do, you know, planks and most people go, oh yeah, they're easy, but, you know, you try doing three sets of, you know, three minutes for a plank. Um, it's not that easy. And then, you know, you do your side planks, hold it for 90 seconds each side, do two or three sets 
a lot of people just don't do any core work and they wonder why, you know, again, they have, you know, lower back issues. If you strengthen your core and everything else, it's much easier to create that, you know, intra-abdominal pressure, especially when you're then wearing a weight belt as well, and you can press against it, you know, your core is stronger as a whole, and there's far less chance of injury. You'll also find, you know, when you start doing your core exercises and doing them properly, how your midsection feels when you're working or pushing hard is very different. You can start to feel that mind-muscle contraction um, and connection versus, you know, just going through the movements. And you'll see, look, I lift, you know, a lot of awkward stuff. I really enjoy, you know, playing around with the natural stones. I enjoy doing my heavy one-arm overhead press. You know, that hits my core really quite hard. Yeah, there's no spinal extension. It's all lateral flexion. But, um, you know, the core has to work really hard to stabilize the, the the core, sorry, my core has to work really hard to stabilize my spine, um, and, you know, that's all going to carry over to when you get stuck in, you know, situations you don't really want to be in, um, at least the health of my spine isn't being compromised, and I don't have any, you know, lower back pain, I don't have any, you know, back discomfort in general, um, you know, stone squats like this, you know, a lot of people would shy away from it because their back's not strong enough. But when you understand how to brace, you've done your groundwork and your lower back, you know, is relatively strong, but so are the supporting muscle groups, the total demand on your lower back is far, far less and it can actually do the role that it needs to. If your lower back, as I said, you know, is trying to do everything, um, you, you you probably will get hurt. There's a far, far, you know, greater chance of getting injury. So, um, yeah, it's just something you need to take into consideration. And in terms of, you know, doing your core exercises and, you know, say, for instance, adding in a few ab crunches as opposed to sit-ups, um, an ab crunch, you know, you just lay on the ground and you sort of try and make your knuckles touch the top of your knees versus a sit-up, you know, you're coming the whole way up. Now, a lot of people loop their feet under something when they're doing sit-ups, so you use a lot of hip flexors and it's not as much core as what you would think versus if you're just doing a basic crunch, you'll really feel it just in your abs. And, you know, if you're trying to strengthen your core you don't really want to cheat yourself, you know, you're trying to do this for you, you're trying to get stronger as a whole, um, and that's where just chasing aimless reps isn't, it's not quality training, put the quality back into your training and you'll get results, it's the same thing with these, I'm just doing heavy carries, this is hitting my lower back quite hard, but it was working it isometrically, I wasn't, you know, having the um, I wasn't, you know, flexing forward or going back into extension. It was just an isometric contraction pretty much of the mid to lower back. So, um, yeah, chances of injury was very, very small. So, um, yeah, they're just a few things that I do in terms of trying to, you know, fix lower back pain, maintain lower back health. Um, so, yeah, if you guys have any further questions on it, comment below. I'll try and get back to you. Um, and any other video topics, you know, let me know as well. Hit like and subscribe and have a great day wherever you are.